Hello dear students, welcome to another lesson for grade 11 students. In this lesson, I'm going to help you prepare for your third period exams and we are going to see all types of questions that you are going to be asked in your exams. So please prepare yourself, get a piece of paper and a pen handy so that you can follow with me. I'll meet you immediately after this short break, so please stay with us. Welcome back, dear students. I hope you are ready now to follow with me this revision, which is very important to you as your exams are on the threshold. In this lesson, we are going to see the content of your third period exams, which includes, we have units seven, eight, and nine from both pupils book and workbook, along with literature time, which is David Copperfield, episodes one, two, and three. Now, in this lesson, you are going, I'm going to give you a brief view of the marking of your exams, which, is, which will be vocabulary out of 24 marks, grammar 20, language functions, again, 20 marks, set book questions, 16 marks, writing, 30, reading comprehension and summary, 40 points. The last part is translation, which is out of 10 marks. The total is 160 marks. Right, so now we are going to see each part individually and see the questions that will be included in this section. Let's start with vocabulary. You have two questions or exercises. One, multiple choice, four items multiplied by three and a half, that makes 14, and blank filling exercise, 4.2 and a half, that makes, makes 10. So, the first question says, from A, B, C, and D, choose the best answer. Let's see, number one, it says, all the students were waiting in, as the teacher distributed the corrected exam papers, we have the choice between capability, audience, anticipation, or pedestal. So here, you need to think carefully about all the possible answers or about the choices, and then you give your answer. Of course, you need to be familiar with these words and know what they mean. I'm going to give you, let's say, 10 seconds to think of the answer, and then we'll see it together. So please, capability, audience, anticipation, or pedestal. What is your answer? Great anticipation. So the sentence says, all students were waiting in anticipation. That is, they were expecting, they were eagerly expecting to see the results of their exam papers. Next exercise, or next uh, answer, question, sorry. Her biography, that she was not as rich as everyone thought. And the choices are revealed, convicted, provoked, or promoted. Again, I'll give you your 10 seconds to think of the answer. Revealed, that is to make known, or convict for a suspect, or provoke, or promote. Your answer is excellent, revealed. That is, it's made public. Her biography revealed, that is showed and made something public, something which was not known to everyone, to reveal a secret, for example. Next one, we have... Our team was expecting to win the match, so a draw was a blank result for them. And we have congested, stabilizing, inexpensive, and disappointing. So what do you think the answer is? Again, your 10 seconds. The team was expecting to win, but finally they ended with a draw. That is the same result. So the result was... Yes, disappointing. That is not as they were expecting. Excellent. Next one, we have 
the local blank were angry at the lack of parking spaces. And we have inventions, residents, consumers, or commentators. As usual, your 10 seconds to think of the answer. The local what? Inventions, residents, consumers, or commentators. I guess you all know these words. So the local, yes, residents, the local residents or inhabitants, that is people living in a certain place, were angry at the lack of parking spaces. Another example, people who are living in blank places do not have access to the internet. So people who live in digital places, remote places, or staggering or hydraulic. A few seconds to think. What do we say in digital places, remote or staggering or hydraulic places? Of course, it's remote. So people who are living in remote, that is far away places, do not have access to the internet. Next question says, this new type of camera, blank, 1,000 frames per second. Does this camera record or evolve or glorify or consume? What do you think the answer is? The camera, what does the camera do? Does it record or evolve or glorify or consume? Of course, the answer must be yes, records. So this new type of camera records or captures 1,000 frames per second. Next one, too much TV viewing can lead to what? Comedy, evidence, inactivity, or prosecution. Again, please, a little time to think. Too much viewing can lead to what? Comedy, evidence, or inactivity. Yes, inactivity, that's excellence. That is lack of activity. So uh, we'll move to the next one. Children challenge their parents' authority far more than they did in the past. Here we have nowadays, collectively, amicably, or wholeheartedly. Uh, if you notice, they are all adverbs, but one is the only answer, which is far more than they did in the past, something which compares the past. So, yes, nowadays. So, children challenge their parents' authority far more nowadays than they did in the past. So nowadays and in the past compare each other. Next exercise, we have blank filling exercise, which is you have to choose the right word to fill in the right space. Number one, a poll was conducted to gauge blank satisfaction. Is it pedestal, pedestal satisfaction, or nowadays, or consumers, or stabilizing, or capability? What do you think the answer is? Excellent, consumer's satisfaction. All right. We cannot talk about capability or pedestal. Number two, it says, nowadays, teenagers are eager to purchase high-end devices. Nowadays, that is these days or at the present time. Number three, this type of camera comes in with a device. So what type of device is it? Is it pedestal, stabilizing, or capability? Of course, an adjective is only stabilizing. Excellent. And number four says, blank-based lamps are used for decoration. What types of lamps are we talking about? Are they capability-based lamps or pedestal-based lamps? Of course, they are pedestal-based lamps. You see, if you know the words, it becomes easy for you to choose the right answer. Another example of such an exercise, we can have, for example, a choice between rank, tension, adversely, caste, and court. The first sentence says, some TV programs can affect children's behavior. How can TV programs affect children's behavior? We need here, yes, an adverb that demonstrates the type of effect that TV programs have on children. So it is, yes, adversely or negatively. Number two, I hope the between you and your neighbor will soon settle down. Something between you and your neighbor and is found in the first line. Rank, tension, caste, or court. So your answer could be 
yes, tension, that is a problem or a uh, uh, time of having troubles with others and misunderstanding. So I hope the tension between you and your neighbor will soon settle down. That is, you will soon become friends again. And number three, the director hasn't chosen the for his film yet, for this film or his film yet. So what can the director choose for his film? What does the director need to do to make his film? He needs rank, cast, or court. Yes, excellent. It's the cast, that is the actors of his, for his film. And the last one, the lack of evidence means that the case is unlikely to go to rank or court. It is a case, uh -huh. so it should be related to excellent court. I hope that now you are, uh, I have helped you to remember or refresh your memory on these vocabulary items and probably some of these will come in your exams, I hope so. Let's move to the next section in your exam paper, which is grammar. In grammar, again, you have two sections. One, multiple choice, and the other, do as required. That is, some transformations. Okay, let's try the first question in our first section in grammar. The first question says, enough talk, let's get blank to business. And our choices are over, down, behind, through. Uh, please note here that we have get over, get down. These are what we call phrasal verbs. So in this sentence, which one is correct? Get over, down, behind, or through? What do you think? That is, uh, one is telling the other, enough talk or stop talking, let's go to business. That is, let's start doing something. So it's get down, right. Let's get down to business, that is, start doing something seriously. And I think in this uh, situation, it's time you get down to your studies. Next one says, you will get blank the illness more quickly if you take this medicine. So is it get over, down, behind, or through? Which meaning fits in this sentence? You will get the illness. When you get ill, you need medicine to, to recover or to get over. That's it. You will get over the illness more quickly if you take this medicine. Next question says, it's hard to get to Talal because his telephone line is always busy. Here we are, going, we are talking about a telephone conversation and sometimes it's not easy to reach a person or it's not easy to get, get over, down, behind, or through. Excellent, get through a person that is be able to talk to him on the phone. Next question says, I'm still hungry, I need else to eat. And our choices are nothing, something, anything, or everything. You need to study the example carefully so that you can answer it correctly. I am still hungry, right? So the person is still hungry. So he needs nothing or something or anything or everything to eat. Excellent. The answer is something. That is, he needs something else to eat to satisfy his hunger. Next question says, we are the last ones to leave. Blank has already gone home. Is it nobody, somebody, anybody, or everybody? Again, you need a careful study of the question. It says, we are the last ones to leave. We are the last ones. It means that, hmm, where are the others? So everybody, everybody has already gone home. Excellent. Next question. Blank can play the game as long as they follow the rules. Is it nothing, anyone, somewhere, or somebody? Uh, look here at the verb play. So play cannot be used with thing or where. So we have choice between anyone and somebody. What do you think is the answer? Anyone or somebody? Excellent. 
anyone can play the game as long as they follow the rules. Next question is, my birthday is blank March the 31st. Is it in, at, on, or from? Remember, it's a date with, uh, with a day. That is, we have uh, a day indicating the date. So is it in, at, on, or from? In this case, we need on. My birthday is on March the 31st. Another example, we live blank the third floor. Is it in, at, on, or from the third floor or second floor or whatever? We always use the preposition on, on the third floor. Uh, these examples just uh, give you a chance to think of the things that you have to know for your exams. Uh, next one, it says the program blank was broadcast yesterday at 7 was my favorite. And we have choice of who, which, where, whose. So you need to know the use of these relative uh, pronouns. And here we have the program who or which. The program is human or a thing. So it should be. Yes, which, the program which was broadcast yesterday was my favorite. Next sentence says, if I were, now here it's a different type of question. It says, do as shown. You have a sentence and you have to transform it according to what is required. In this case, it says, if I were you, I'd listen to my parents and you are asked to report. Report this sentence. And you have the starting or the opening sentence. It says, my friend advised me to, advised me, sorry, what? Advised me, yes, advised me to listen to my parents. Remember, uh, here we have the expression, advise someone to do something. Ask someone to do something. In the original sentence, we say, if I were you. Here it's a form of advise. So instead of saying, if I were you, you can say, I advise you. So my friend advised me to listen to my parents. Another example, don't waste your time. And again, you are asked to report this statement. My teacher warned me. We saw in the previous one, my friend advised me to do something. Here, my teacher warned me. How can we complete it? Warn someone not to. So my teacher warned me not to waste my time. All right? I hope it's clear for you. Next question says, keyhole surgery saves many lives. And here you are asked to make it passive. If you are asked to make passive, you need to look at two things, subjects and verb and the tense of the verb. Uh, with the subjects and objects, we switch their positions. And for the verb, we need to know the tense of it so that we can use the verb to be in that tense plus the past participle of the main verb. Here, the object is many lives, and the subject is keyhole surgery, and the verb is in the present. So it becomes many lives as a subject, plus the verb to be in the present, which is is or are, plus the, the, the original subject uh, preceded by by. So it becomes many lives are saved by keyhole surgery. Here, we mention the subject because it's important. If it's not important, we can stop at many lives are saved. Another example of the same question the director chose the cast carefully and make passive. So the director chose the cast carefully. The object is the cast. The, uh, the tense is the past simple. So it is the cast was chosen carefully. Another example, the courts are increasing fines for dangerous driving. Yes, it becomes fines. The same question, making passive, 
fines for dangerous driving are being increased. Here we used are being because we have are increasing presence continuous plus past participle of increase, which is increased. All right, we move now to language functions. Here you have four situations to which you have to respond appropriately. Uh, next one says, your friend invites you to his birthday party. So how will you respond? You can say, for example, I'll be glad to come. Thank you for inviting me. Or you can always refuse the invitation and say, I am sorry. Another one says, your father asks you where you prefer to spend the summer holidays. You can respond, I prefer to stay here and enjoy our local recreational resource. Or you can suggest another place where you want to spend your summer vacation. Another situation, your sister spends too much time on the internet. So what will you tell her? You can say, for example, be careful, it's not good for your eyes. Another situation, your brother doesn't know how to edit a file on his computer. So you can help him by saying, go to the home button, press open, and choose the file you want to preview or edit. You are giving him instructions on how to perform a certain task. Another situation, your mother refuses to let you go out with your friends, so normally you try to persuade her, and you tell her, please mother, I won't be late, I promise. Another situation, your father tells you he has a surprise for you. Norm normally, you would guess what the surprise is, and you say, really, what is it? I guess it's a new mobile, it's a new car, or whatever dream you have in your mind. Uh, another one, your friend thinks it's fun to drive at high speed. Now here you need to be careful because it's not a good thing. So you must say, I totally disagree with you. It's really dangerous. If I were you, I wouldn't do it. All right, uh, dear students, let's move to our next part of the exam questions. And this time it's about set book questions where you are going to be asked to answer textbook questions and literature time questions. Let's see first the textbook questions. And we have the first one which says, what is Kuwait's official media policy based on? This is a general and at the same time a specific question. Uh, here, you can say it is based on mutual cooperation. Besides, it is based on the respect for the affairs of other countries. Or you can write whatever information, but that should be accurate and uh, reasonable. Next question says, watching TV can be both useful and distractive. Explain. Here you need to show the positive and the negative effects of TV viewing. For example, you can remember the positive uh, effects of watching TV along with the negative effects. And then you try to group them in your own sentences and you say something like, TV watching can be useful as it stimulates the mind and lets you think about life choices. It can also help develop good habits and imagination. On the other hand, TV viewing can be harmful because it promotes inactivity and encourages unhealthy behavior such as taking risks and eating junk food. Remember, when answering sensible questions, you need to give complete answers, complete sentences, all right? Next question says, how can you control your TV watching habits? Again, you can recall the information that you know about these habits, which are family rules, uh, sitting time, and uh, turning off TV, along with uh, discussing uh, with your friends, and reading about books. And you reformulate these ideas in your own sentences and say, you can control your TV watching habits by making family rules, such as setting time limits and turning off TV during meal times. Another way of benefiting from TV is to discuss what you watch with family members and friends. You can also learn about interesting topics by reading books. Again, these are just samples of answers. Uh, next question, how can cameras be helpful to us? You can talk about cameras can be used for different purposes. For example, they can be used for security reasons in buildings such as banks and airports. They can also be used in web chatting, enabling people to see each other. Besides, they help in surgical operations. Finally, they are necessary in film industry. And here you talked about the different uses of cameras. 
Another question, in your opinion, what makes a good film? Here you need to talk about the story, uh, the plot, the actors, photography, and things like that. All right, let's move to another question, the qualities of a good film critic, that is the person who writes film review. He should be honest, accurate, he shouldn't be biased when judging others' work, his evaluation should be based on facts, when judging other people's work, we should give them the rights they deserve. And we move to the literature time, and here we have a few questions. Family has an important role in one's life, explain. You can talk about how family ensures happiness for its members, as well as peace and security. Family unity improves one's personality and satisfies one's basic needs. Another question may, may be asked like this. Children mistreatment is a thorny issue in most countries and is considered a crime. How can this influence children's character? And you can talk, for example, saying that mistreatment is, in itself is a crime. Mistreated children suffer a lot and may turn to criminals themselves, and governments should protect children against this. Okay, dear students, we, I guess it's now, it's now time to have a rest, and after the a short break, we will talk about writing and how we can tackle it. So please take a short break and we'll be back very soon. Welcome back, dear students. Let's move now with the, our uh, exercises. This time, I'm going to talk about writing and what are the requirements for writing. Uh, here you have different types that could be uh, included in your exam. You can be asked to write a report or account or an email or an argumentative topic, chart, table, or uh, what you call table analysis. In this uh, lesson, we are going to concentrate on writing a report. And remember, uh, these types of questions are semi-related to your topics, that is, to your lessons. So, a possible, uh, before this, let me remind you of the tips for writing. Whenever you write, you need to pay attention to understanding what you are asked about. Read the topic carefully. Then, brainstorm ideas about the topic. That is, try to gather the information that you know about the subject. Next, pick up a thesis or main idea. Try to choose a, a very interesting introduction. And write an outline to follow, and you will be marked on this outline. And begin writing your paragraphs, that is, composing your sentences. When you finish, you need to review your essay for mistakes, uh, spelling mistakes for punctuation, layout, paragraphing, and all these things. Now, the question here says, media, and it is related to your lessons, media has the power to influence people. In 12 sentences, around 140 words, plan and write a report about media in terms of its types, positive and negative effects, and aims for a better society. So we are going to write a report about media, including its types, its positive and negative effects, aims for a better society. The first thing you need to do is to gather the information about media. You can write it on a piece of paper or just go through it in your mind. And then you write an outline for your composition. So the outline should include an introduction along with body, which includes idea number one, along with its details, and then idea number two with details, idea number three with details again, and you conclude with a conclusion. Normally this outline goes with any types of writing. All you have to do is to change the ideas and the details. In our case here, uh, the outline should look something like this. The introduction, where you talk about media has the power to influence people. This could be an introduction. And then you have uh, paragraph one, 
types of media and you can mention newspapers, the radio, TV and the roles they play in our lives. And the second paragraph talking about positive and negative effects such as information or changing thinking patterns. That is one as a positive and the other as negative. And the aims of media that should be to promote social causes. And the last paragraph should be a concluding one where you talk about your own opinion on media. Now that you have uh, made your outline, all you need to do is to write your paragraph. So you need to, uh, all you need now to do is develop your outline in full sentences. That is, each idea, you make it in a full comprehensive sentence. And then don't forget to use linking words such as in addition to this, besides, moreover, and uh, the other linking words. And when you finish writing, do some proofreading, check your spelling and punctuation. All right? So if you have the ideas and you have the organization, it won't be difficult for you to develop your uh, paragraph. So that was an example of writing. Let's now move to reading comprehension, where you have a text along with uh, some questions and a summary making. And the next section, which is translation, will be also related to the reading passage and uh, another part from the general or the normal lessons. Our text says, now this is, as you see, it's the first paragraph, so we have some what we call indention. Persuasion is the art of convincing someone to agree with your point of view. According to the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle, there are three basic tools of persuasion, ethos, pathos, and logos. The, this is the introduction of our text. Remember, most of the time we are asked to give the title of the passage, and here normally where the title appears. So please try to remember the ideas and where they occur in your uh, reading passage. Next paragraph, it starts with, ethos is a speaker's way of convincing the audience that she is a credible source. An audience will consider a speaker credible if she seems trustworthy, reliable, and sincere. This can be done in many ways. For example, a speaker can develop ethos by explaining how much experience or education she has in the field. The same paragraph goes on. After all, all, after all, you would be more likely to listen to advice about how to take care of your teeth from a dentist than a firefighter. A speaker can also create ethos by convincing the audience that she is a good person who has their best interest at heart. If an audience cannot trust you, you will not be able to persuade them. So that was paragraph one. Paragraph two starts with pathos. Pathos is a speaker's way of connecting with an audience's emotions. For example, a speaker who is trying to convince an audience to vote for him might say that he alone can save the country from a terrible war. These words are intended to fill the audience with fear, thus making them want to vote for him. And the paragraph goes on, similarly, a charity organization that helps animals might show an audience pictures of injured dogs and cats. These images are intended to fill the viewers with pity. If the audience feels bad for the animals, they will be more likely to donate money. That was the second paragraph. We move to the third paragraph, which starts with Lagos. Lagos is the use of facts, information, statistics, or other evidence to make your arguments more convincing. An audience will be more likely to believe you if you have data to back up your claims. For example, a commercial of soap, a commercial for soap, might tell you that laboratory tests have shown that their soap kills all 7 million of the bacteria living on your hands right now. This piece of information might make you more likely to buy their brand of soap. Presenting this evidence is much more convincing than simply saying, our soap is the best. Use of logos can also increase a speaker's ethos. The more facts a speaker includes in his argument, 
the more likely you are to think that he is educated and trustworthy. The last paragraph says, although ethos, pathos, and logos all have their strengths, they are often most effective when they are used together. Indeed, most speakers use a combination of them to persuade their audiences. The next time you listen to a speech, watch a commercial, or listen to a friend who tries to convince you to lend him some money, be on the lookout for these ancient Greek tools of persuasion. That was our text, and now we move to comprehension questions, but you need to remember the main ideas of the text. It talks about three things, right? Ethos, pathos, and logos, and each paragraph describes each of these ways of convincing people. Now, the first question in our uh, example here says, a suitable title for this passage could be, and uh, make sure or be, uh, try to expect that you will get such uh, questions in your exams, that is finding a title for the passage. So what could be the best title for this passage? Is it the Greek art, tools of persuasion, always trust speakers, know the characteristics of your audience. And uh, in this type of questions, it's not very easy because all titles or suggested titles may be possible, but only one of them is the best. So the text does not talk mainly about the Greek art or trusting speakers or the characters of audience, but it talks about the tools of persuasion, which are the three things that we mentioned, ethos, pathos, and logos, right? The next question says, as used in paragraph two, what is the best antonym for credible? Here, antonym could be replaced by opposite. That is, what is the opposite for credible? Is it boring, amazing, dishonest, or unintelligent? The text or the word appears in this place. An audience will consider a speaker credible if she seems trustworthy, reliable, and sincere. So the, the writer associates the word credible with trustworthy, reliable, and sincere. So what is the opposite of these words? Is it boring, amazing, dishonest, or unintelligent? What do you think? Great, dishonest. Right. Number, uh, next question says, which tool of persuasion do you use when you talk about your experience and knowledge in a field? The text talks about the three tools of persuasion, and one of them is used if you want to talk about your experience, knowledge in a field. So we have here ethos, pathos, logos, or a combination of all. Uh, again, let me remind you of the text. It says, this can be done in many ways. For example, a speaker can develop ethos by explaining how much experience. So experience is related to ethos. So the answer must be ethos. Excellent. Next question. The underlined word them in the last paragraph refers to, and here we have the last paragraph. It starts with, although ethos, pathos, pathos, and logos all have their strengths, they are often most effective when they are used together. Indeed, most speakers use a combination of them. Now, them refers to what? Does it refer to strengths, speakers, audiences, or the last one, ethos, pathos, and logos? What do you think? Excellent. Good guess. Eat the last one. All right, let's move to another question. And it says, why should a charity organization show pictures of injured animals? In the text, we have reference of a charity organization which shows pictures of injured animals. So what was the purpose of such organization in such an act? Uh, is it, this is the text, it says, similarly, a charity organization that helps animals might show an audience pictures of injured dogs and cats. These images are intended to fill the viewers with pity. If the audience feels bad for the animals, they will be more likely to donate money. So from this piece of information, we can conclude that the reason 
of showing uh, pictures of injured animals is to fill viewers with pity and to make them donate money. And our answer should look something like this. A charity organization could show a picture of injured animals to fill viewers with pity and consequently make them donate money to save these animals. All right? Uh, remember that all these questions are based on the text. All you need to do is to try to locate where the information is. Next question, how can logos support ethos? That is, how can such a tool support the other? Again, let's go to the text and see where logos are, uh, taught or are mentioned to be supporting ethos. The text says, use of logos can also increase a speaker's ethos. The more facts a speaker includes in his argument, the more likely you are to think that he is educated and trustworthy. So in order to increase your uh, credibility, you need to support or back up your uh, saying by facts. And our answer should look something like this. The use of facts and, st and statistics increases the credibility of the speaker. Thus, the audience is easily persuaded. Uh, now we move to summary making, in which you are asked to summarize a certain paragraph in the text. In this case, it says, with reference to the passage, summarize paragraph three in four sentences showing how pathos are effective in persuading an audience. So you need to uh, look here that first it is paragraph three and it asks you how pathos are effective in persuading an audience. You need to go to paragraph three and see how pathos are effective in persuading an audience. If you go to the paragraph, it says pathos is a speaker's way of connecting with an audience emotions. First, they are related or connected with emotions. And in the middle, to fill the audience with fear, thus making them want to vote for him. And uh, just below it, show an audience pictures of injured dogs and cats. Uh, to fill the viewers with pity, they will be more likely to donate money. Now, after locating the information needed for our summary, we can write our own summary and come up with something like this. Pathos is connected with emotions. So here we give a definition for pathos. The speaker may use such a tool to convince the audience of what he wants from them. A speaker may fill an audience with fear and make them vote for him to save them from an expected danger, as the example mentioned in the text. Similarly, a speaker may target people's pity to make them donate money. Remember, when summarizing a paragraph or a text, we must be faithful to the content and the information mentioned, but we give it in a shortened uh, way. That is, try to be uh, minimized in our description of what occurred in the text. Now that we are done with the summary making, we move to translation. Now, this translation part is composed of two things. One, summarizing a paragraph from the text into Arabic, and the other part, summarizing pieces or sentences from the textbook into English. So the first one says, with reference to the passage, translates the following from the last paragraph. So it is taken from the last paragraph in our text, and it says, the next time you listen to a speech, watch a commercial, or listen to a friend who tries to convince you to lend him some money, be on the lookout for these ancient Greek tools of persuasion. We want to rephrase these sentences into Arabic. You need to uh, have a general idea, think in Arabic, and choose the right words to express the ideas here. And we can uh, come up with something like this as proposal. في المرة القادمة عندما تستمع لخطاب تشاهد إعلان تجاري أو تستمع إلى أحد الأصدقاء الذي يحاول أن يقنعك بقرضه مبلغا من المال كن حذرا من هذه الأدوات اليونانية العتيقة في الإقناع. That's more or less the same 
as the original paragraph. Now the next part, here we have translation from Arabic into good English. Again, for the sentences here, they are taken from your textbooks. So if you know your lessons well, if you understand all the words, it won't be difficult for you. Let's take an example. The first one says, Badr is talking and says, يعلمنا التلفزيون كيف ننمي ونستخدم خيالنا. Now we want to change this into English. And we can say, Badr, television teaches us how to develop and use our imagination. We have a reply to Badr from Hamad who says, ولكنه أيضا يعزز الخمول وقد يزيد من خطر البدانة. So we change this into English and say, Hamad, but it also promotes inactivity and may increase the risk of obesity. Right? So these two sentences are taken from your textbook. Another example, we, this time, Ali is talking and say, says, إن دستور الكويت لعام 1991 يضمن حرية الإعلام. We can say the, 19, the 1991 Kuwaiti constitution guarantees freedom of press. And Talal responds, صحيح ولكن ضمن حدود القانون. So the English version would be, Talal, it's true but within the limits of the law. Okay, you see it's not that difficult. And uh, I think now, we have covered all the items in the exam paper. I wish that you have benefited from this lesson and uh, wish you good luck for your coming exams. Until I see you another time, please take care and have a nice time.